Today we're at the garage of Jim Hayes. Right there. There he is. The one and only. Jim, now some guys collect uh, thimbles or uh, postcards, but you collect heavy iron. Antique machine tools. How in the world did you move all these? Because you don't really look like the strong man. Well, I'm not as strong as I used to be. <laughs> but I built this shop myself, alone. Moved everything alone. All these machines are moved on rollers. And then I moved, they were all set off at the door from the truck. And I moved them and placed them where they are now, all by myself. And what year did you build the building, did you say? I got out of the Army in 1955, and I started the following year. So it'd be 56. Now, some of these must have been out of factory buildings. and. Well, they're all manufactured machines. Now, actually, this machine right here that you're looking at is probably the oldest machine in the shop. And I'm sure it's well over 100 years old. It's a New Haven number one lathe. And everything is operated on belts. Mm -hmm. Every machine in here is run from one motor. is the way all shops were a hundred years ago, before the invention of electric motors. And what is this? That is a power hacksaw for cutting metal. That machine is probably the newest one. It's probably 60 years old, I would imagine. You have a big drill press? That'll drill a hole up to two inches in diameter in solid steel. Now what is this machine back? That is a power punch. Oh, punching yeah. holes in metal. And it's probably a hundred years old too. And this is... That's just a spare drill press. I have several spares, and I still buy them whenever I can find them, because they're getting awful scarce. Yeah, I would guess so. This is a drill press? <coughs> right, that's called a radio drill. It's quite a rare piece, too. There are very few of them left around today. So instead of the drill being stationary, this can actually move. That, right, the drill can move anywhere onto the piece of work without moving the work. You just bolt the work down and then you move the drill to wherever you want the hole. Different from a regular drill press. Now of course years ago a lot of this was powered by steam. Right, originally it all was. And is this a boiler? That's right. Okay. And there's a little 10 horse motor beside it, steam motor. And they used to run in the shop. And yeah. And where do you think that boiler came from? Any actually, idea? that came out of a greenhouse in Owasso. But today we're running this with a electric motor. Two horse electric motor, yeah. Two horse, is that General Electric? I think it's a Wagner. Oh, Wagner. Well, what's the cost to fire it up? Well, let's see. Seems I know ya. I guess I can do it. <laughs> well, I have to do a little adjusting here. This motor has a bad spot on it, so you have to get it in a certain spot to start the motor.
And this is a lathe here. I guess I can't get back far enough to... Wow! I guess so. Each of these tools have a lever that you can throw. They each have a clutch. Or a clutch, okay. You can run one or all. Well, you want. let's try running one of those down there. Well, here's the tilt clutch. What happens is shift the belt. Okay. Wow. How about one of these? Maybe we can see a little bit of it. Whatever. Do you ever wonder if the drill presses they make today will be running in a hundred years? Very interesting, Jim. Thank you. Anytime, glad to show it to anybody that's really interested. 